lose their job, uh, stub their toe, they could be thrown below the poverty line. And yet, at the end of last fiscal year, Virginia finished with a $544.8 million budget surplus. And most of it's sitting in a rainy day fund. Now, rainy day funds are great, but not when you have an emergency. And if we have the highest child poverty rate in history in Virginia, that's an emergency. We need to tap into it. But instead of doing that, we're going to give $7 million to the police and $7 million to the military. So we would rather spend $14 million uh, to jail the poor at home and bomb the poor overseas when we could be spending that million dollars, $14 million, to, to create jobs, to create jobs to lift the families of these children out of poverty create jobs in public transportation, to better fund education, um, for social services, for after school programs, for Planned Parenthood, for all sorts of things. And yet, we are going to spend all that money on these millions of dollars worth of cruise missiles to murder innocent Libyan civilians. You know, I just want to know, like, all the old people, they're like, oh, it, it was never like this. So if that was the case, I want to know what happened to this country. To be honest with you, it was probably always like this. They were just better at hiding it in the past. That's right. And now that all this stuff is out in the open, it shows our strength. Our numbers might be fewer than we'd like, but our quality and our fighting spirit is just wonderful. And we are just strong. That's right. That's right. But anyway, I'm petitioning to redraw the budget so that we can help these kids and lift them above the poverty line, creating jobs so that their parents can better support them, and to, to cut spending on war and prisons. And, uh, my petition, I have it here with me today, I'm petitioning on behalf of the Party for Socialism and Liberation, and when when I turn this petition in to whoever, to the House of Delegates, to the Governor, they're probably just going to throw it in the trash. Because that's what they think of our opinion, that's what they think of your opinion, that's what they think of the regular working man's opinion, and that's why they're trying to bust unions, which is another reason so many people are in poverty, because they don't want you to have workers' rights. So, all I'm saying is pretty much don't, don't trust the government, Rise up, occupy everything. Thank you. Woo! Um, hi guys, my name is Vicky. Hello. Hi. Um and I am, all right, now don't, don't look at me bad for saying this. I'm the president of the Young Democrats here at VCU. But I'm not here to talk to you about anything democratic whatsoever, bullshit, no. I'm here to talk to you about a story about our efforts this year to try to get students registered to vote and to try to get them to fill out their absentee ballot forms here at VCU. We tried to get students to register to vote. You know, we, we register students to vote every single year. And according to some federal act starting in 2008, the university registrar has been required to send out voter registration information for students. So, you know, we found out about that. We were like, oh, great. Maybe they could work together with us. You know, maybe we could all register students together and maybe we can get students active in civic engagement and trying to, you know, fight against all this crap that's going on right now, right? No. So they sent out this email, and I, and you know, it looked like a great email, but what it opened up, it was literally three sentences. Sentence one, and to, according to 2008 blah 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 act, we are required to send you this email. Sentence number two, here is a national voter registration email link, with the link. Sentence number three, best luck with your next semester. Signed, the university registrar's office. 
That was the most bullshit email I have ever seen in my life. And not even this, I clicked on the link, the link was expired. So they sent us false information on voter registration. So I'll tell you what, no, we did not take this lightly. Every single one of my Young Democrats exec board members sent emails to both the president of our university and the university registrar, but not only that, we contacted the president of Students for Sensible Drug Policy for SAVES, which is sexual assault, dating, violence, education by students. We contacted NAACP. We contacted the United Secular Alliance. We contacted everyone we could think of that would have issues of this, and they all wrote letters too. All right. So a lot, a lot of resistance was was brought on us from the university. Hey, hey, hey! We're only we're required to do something. You know, we don't we don't try to. We're not here to actually register students. We're required to send. Literally, I've gotten email correspondence that said we're we're not trying to register students. We are we're required to send out this information. But that's not good enough because you sent out wrong information and you yeah. sent it out to the wrong people because we're pissed and we're gonna say that's something. Right. Yep. That's right. So we kept emailing them back and forth until finally they put a new telegram. A telegram is something the students here at VCU get out every day. Every day they send us information. And it said voter registration. And we worked with the university registrar's office finally after after actually the SGA got involved and the SGA talked to the direct the dean of student affairs. Once once he was contacted, they started saying they started giving us information back in the positive way. Hey, maybe we could work together. So that's a little fishy first off. Well, we finally got a telegram out and they finally gave us the correct information for the national forum. They gave us a state forum because most of our students are from Virginia. They told us, uh, and they also mentioned that student, uni uh, program, or student organizations all over campus register students to vote. So if you are not registered to vote, if you know someone that is not registered to vote, please come bring them to our table. We register students to vote three times a week on Mondays, on Wednesdays, and Thursdays, right outside of the Commons. You don't even have to walk in. It's right by right by the Floyd Avenue entrance. You don't even have to go in. It takes a minute and a half. We bring it to City Hall for you. But not only that, another thing we've been told that we can do, absentee ballot forms. We all know that y'all registered to vote in 12th grade government class back in your hometowns. You didn't register here. And we're going to help you out with that. Absentee ballot voting, um, we've also tried to work with the university to get absentee ballot voting here. I got told um, to talk to somebody else, and then I got the other person I got told to talk to was somebody who said, we don't actually register students to vote, we don't actually help with this process, we just distribute information. So I've been led around in circles, so basically nobody wants to help me bring absentee ballot voting onto campus, and I think that's wrong. Yes, it is. Um, so, I need, I need people to help. I need people to stand up to say, we're not going to take this. You need to help us bring absentee ballot voting to campus. There are a lot of students that don't know there are elections every year in our state. There are a lot of students that would like to vote if they knew this information, but they've never been told because they grew up in a school system that doesn't encourage civic engagement in any form and tells you not to get involved. That's right. So I'm asking people to stand with us and to help get students registered to help fill out application forms. We have forms that are already have pre, they have, you know, the university is already on there. It's highlighted what you need to fill out. We will turn it in for them. Bring students who want to vote that aren't registered here in Richmond to us. Bring students who want to register to vote here and hopefully we'll make some changes. But thank you. That's all I want. Oh, one more thing. Rally. Um, we also work really heavily with the Coalition to Protect Women's Health. And on the day that Occupy Richmond sets forth, prior to when the launch for Occupy Richmond on the 15th, from 1 to 3 in Monroe Park, there is going to be a huge women's health rally. I don't know if you've heard, <coughs> September 15th, regulations were passed from the Board of Health. Um, basically, in the next two years, if our um, abortion clinics and public, um, public health care clinics do not conform to architecture requirements such as elongated hallways, such as separate ventilation systems in every room, such as parking lot sizes being the exact same amount as a full-blown hospital, they, abortion clinics would be shut down in our state, all of them. There will be no access. But not only is this about abortion, this is about all the people who have to go to those healthcare services 
to get things like cancer screenings, STD AIDS screenings. To, exactly, you know, people who I, people who don't have health insurance and just need they just need someone to give them some advice. They want some birth control. birth control, some condoms, family planning, pregnancy prevent. All these things is going to get shut down. So we need people to come stand with us on Monroe Park the same day Occupy Richmond happens. So you're going to be here anyway. One to three, come stand with us. Now that's all. I'm not going to take up any more of y'all's time. Thank you so much. my government because I've said the national anthem every day in elementary school. I sang the national anthem every football game and every baseball game because I love my country because they take care of me. I will never question this because no one will ever tell me to question this. You guys go and you, fought and you talk to the government. I'm the one who needs to be talked to. I'm the one that needs to stand with you. The only way we can get government to listen to us, the only way we can make change is if all of us stand together. I see so much anger, so much fight here. And people walk by it. That makes me angry. <laughs> makes me angry. Woo! We need to talk to people like me. Talk to people like them. The government knows that they are fighting their they're taking away all of our rights slowly. It's me that doesn't know. All right. Hey everyone, I'm Josh. Hey Josh. I wasn't planning on saying anything today, but that was a pretty good speech. Mic check, babe. Mic check, everybody hear me? Am I good now? Can you hear me? Okay, I'm Josh. I had no plans of speaking today, but... Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Hi, I'm Josh. Hi, I'm Josh. I had no plans of speaking today, but... I had no plans of speaking today, but... I grew up in a house where my parents didn't care too much about politics. My parents worked... You're fine. My parents worked every freaking day of their lives to put a roof over my head. My parents worked hard and hard, and then they got split up. Now my parents are working even harder now that they're not together, and I can barely afford to eat half of the freaking time. I have to go to my sister's house to take showers when our shower breaks down. I have to get people to buy me food because my family can't afford to take care of me because our government does not take care of our families. That's right. Now, if anyone else is sick of being stepped on, of being laughed at by Wall Street, who are laughing at the thousands of people who are protesting because the government does not listen to its people anymore. The people listen to their government when the government is supposed to be for the people, by the people. Isn't that what we're supposed to be, a democracy? That's right. But no, now we're just a bunch of people who don't care, who want to go watch freaking Jersey Shore or reality TV. That's all people care about. They want to be able to eat their fast food, go home and watch TV after they're done working eight hours a day with minimum wage of $7.25 an hour while inflation keeps going up because the Federal Reserve continues to make money to screw our economy. And the people who are rich are getting more freaking rich. And the people who are in the middle class are just being brought down that's to the right. poor. And that's what's going on. And people don't care. They don't. That's what pisses me off. I never knew about any of this. I had to learn for myself. And now I'm irritated. And I'm glad that people are finally making a stand. That people are doing something about all the wrong in this country. Yeah. That people are actually coming together. But we need more people. We need people who are going to sit down and listen and learn 
Because we're not being taught this in school. That's right. You think the teachers are really going to tell you all that's going on? No. They're, they're just going to teach you what they have to teach you, and they don't care. Probably because they're not paid enough. That's yeah. right. But, whatever. That's Some of them are veterans, some of them have been professors, some of them have been lawyers. Times change, people's luck change. But I don't believe in luck, I believe in blessings, and I think that makes a difference. But I thank my stars above that there is a higher power bigger than all of us because we would be in bad shape if it was really left up to us. That's it. I was in class. I was like a grandmother of the class. You want to speak? I don't think I can do a sad thing. 
Well, I love the Japan. Now that we're all talking about the things that motivate us to be here and the, the slogan that's being passed around, we are the 99%, we must all realize that every single person has some sort of story to tell about how they were unjustly, something was taken from them. Yesterday at the, uh, the Occupy Richmond organizational meeting, I met a man named Father Eddie. He's 64 and has cancer of the colon and bladder. And I'm, I'm actually pretty surprised that he's not here. I don't know why he's not here. But I, I didn't get him to talk to him that much, but he told me that his insurance didn't, wouldn't pay for it. This man, who is a minister here at VCU, he was smiling the entire time wearing a VCU hat, doesn't have the money to pay in full for his health care. That is just unfathomable to me. Four years ago, my mother died of cancer after a five-year struggle. But because my father's in the Navy, everything that she needed, she got for free. If my father wasn't in the Navy, she would not have lasted as long as she did. I would not have had the time that I had with her. Socialized health care is a reality. Many people in this country already have it. I have TRICARE. I have perfectly socialized medicine. I got sick over the summer, I drove to Norfolk uh, Naval Base and I got treatment immediately. We can't just dismiss these things by saying, oh, it costs too much. My mother got uh, at least five MRI scans and I just looked on my phone, average of a cost of $2,000. And as I said before, I have a, a device that lets me look up web pages from anywhere in the world, yet we can't afford to make people healthy. We can't afford education. These are real things that we need to get in arguments about. If someone says that it's not a reality for healthcare to be free, for education to be free, you need to tell them that they are wrong. For the sake of everyone that's sick, everyone that was sick, everyone that wanted an education and couldn't afford it. These are human rights. These are things we have to fight for. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Julia. Hi, Julia. My brother was one of the 700 who was arrested on the Brooklyn Bridge, and that motivated. I never, I wasn't completely involved in the whole Occupy Wall Street movement until I realized that their voices were trying to be squashed. <laughs> that ain't gonna fly anymore. That is not okay. I am pissed off. That's right. I've been pissed off for too long. Pissed on. And pissed on, girl. That's right. To let this slide anymore. It's not okay. Occupy Richmond, I'm super excited about it. I'm hoping if anybody wasn't there, our last meeting was last night. We got together some details about when and where we plan to occupy. Um, there's another meeting. Do you know if it's at four or five? There's a meeting tomorrow at Monroe Park. Huh? Sunday at four. Sunday, Sunday, sorry. Sunday at four at Monroe Park. We're going to go over ideas, go over a platform, kind of consolidate all of these issues if you know if we can um, I think that one of the most important things to remember when we're doing this is that all of us who are able to go to school although we may be paying student loans when we graduate we are privileged to have been in school to That's have right. been educated That's right. Not everyone gets that opportunity. I think one of the most key aspects of changing society is having the masses be as educated as possible. 
If you know as much that this person does, it makes it harder for this big person to step all over the little person. If you know your rights, if you know about the economy, if you know how things work, you have a better opportunity of elevating yourself if you're in a bad situation. I also feel that because there's kind of an attack on the education system in this country, I feel like it's extremely important that that is one of the main things that we focus on. Children need to be educated. Children need to know the real history. No more of these errors in textbooks. No more history books being written by non-historians. That shit needs to end. Virginia needs to adopt some new policies in their education system if they want to see people actually bettering this state, let alone the country. Another thing, we cannot, going back to what Joe, or somebody said about children's health care, there was a story of a child in Maryland who had a toothache, a tooth infection, because his mother was working multiple different jobs because that's the only way that she could make enough money to support her children, she could not get insurance, dental insurance, which is, you know, of course, not included in your regular insurance. Her son had an infection in his tooth. It traveled through his bloodstream into his brain, and he died. This child was eight years old. There is absolutely no reason that kids need to be dying because their mothers are working three jobs and can't afford insurance. It's ridiculous. It is an atrocity, and it totally goes against the essence of American values. And let me just go on another tangent and say that the Christian ideological sentiment that is being put out into the atmosphere of America through people like the Tea Party is not Christian at all. I must remind you that it was Jesus that went into the temples, threw over the tables of... Exactly. Exactly. Because he knew that material, materiality in general was detrimental to society. Jesus. He is honored by so many people, yet his values, what he preached, is not being exemplified in people's behavior, and especially in Washington. I think it's time that we show these Christians that they are in fact not, and that the Christian, the real Christian thing to do is to feed the poor, right. is to help your neighbor, yeah, right. and is to pick up your that's friends right. when, they, when they fall right. down. Right. And I just also wanted to say thank you guys so much for coming out here because there was such a massive presence and so much emotion that was here today. And I'm really glad that everybody got to show their point of view. And if anybody else wants to talk, we still got more to about. <laughs> There's always more to bitch about. Look, and I want to say this. Come on. When <coughs> we win this war, and we will, we're going to party like it's 1999. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When we win this war, it's, it's not going to be easy. No, it's it not. is not going to no, be easy. Not. The rich do not want to get less rich. They want to get even more rich. But I'm turning down, turning down. I feel like turning down. it's more necessary to give extra to people that have none than to have all of this crap that makes my Go look ahead, bigger, girl. okay? Yeah. <laughs> there is no reason that we all can't make this happen. That's right. We are. Not to be cliche, but we are the 99%. 99 is such a bigger number than one. We can do this. It's just going to take coordination. Coordination is key.
as many cities as possible need to come together, talk about local issues, and apply them to national issues. Yeah. Thank you. So let's do it. I think that one of the most important things is that we set up a student organization because through VCU, you have to have a student representative from a registered organization in order to hold something like this. And I think that as sentiment, as a, a, a symbol, we should do, you know, kind of have rallies on a regular basis, especially as Occupy Richmond starts gaining momentum. And it will. And it will. Um, there are a lot of people that were here today that weren't at Occupy Richmond last night. And, you know, there have been a lot of people that have been asking us, what, are, what is this all about? And this is good. This is people curious. And this is, we need to have it already ready, what we're going to tell them and what we want to accomplish. So tomorrow at the Occupy Richmond meeting, I think Sunday. I, Sunday. Sunday at 4, I'm See, like, I've been, I've been, um, no, little sleep. <laughs> little sleep. There's a revolution. You can't sleep. <laughs> but, um. I personally feel like it's extremely important that as many people as possible start coming out to these Occupy Richmond meetings, even though it will create a lot, you know, more difficulties probably with the, you know, with the consensus, the modified consensus. I still feel like if there's the same people coming to every meeting, then there's not a diverse enough representation of the entire public. So if you could get Everybody, I think that what we need to do is we need to start carrying pamphlets, carrying flyers, passing them out to people on campus, in the streets, and on the internet. exactly, and creating the publicity that we need because the media is only going to show what they want to show and what sells. If I can remind you, when they were airing on NBC about this rally, they showed me and two white guys, okay? Two white guys and a white girl, the most represented of all populations in this country. And that's the only two opinions they showed on the news. Come on. In order for us to get everybody's opinions heard, we need to be grassroots organizing this campaign. It is about getting on the floor, getting out there, and getting information and educating people. Because a lot of people are misinformed about what's really going on and how the world really works. So let's do it. Yeah. I think that VCU needs a student organization that is specifically catering to Occupy Richmond so that they can use VCU's resources for flyers, they can use VCU's resources for posters, they can use VCU's resources. If they're making us pay for them, then they might as well pay for us. That's right. Woo Same thing. There you go. Yep. That's the problem. Yep. This is the stock list. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to say some of the stuff I knew, some of the stuff I had no idea about. So I'm. Oh, some of the stuff I knew, some of the stuff I had no idea about. So I'm glad I came out. I look around. I'm glad I see this many people here. But it's, it would be awesome if there were more. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is if you're all here because you're concerned or you want to learn more, maybe you should try and figure out how to appeal to everybody else. Like, I don't know, have something random. Like a, a, pan, a guy in a panda suit doing a backflip into a faux wood chip. People will come by asking, what's that? <laughs> you know, and then you kind of explain to them it's a metaphor for this. And then, you know, real, like bait the hook and then reel them in. Because yeah. a lot of what you're saying needs to be heard by everybody else like this this is some important stuff you know but you also need to realize the rest of your audience may not see it that way uh, other than that I'm glad like some of you shared your stories I'm, I'm really glad to hear some of this stuff from you uh, I'm gonna go now because I have some work but fight the good fight All right, guys, one, one last point I would like to make is, I mean, I think we're all in agreement that we're kind of pissed, right? Yeah! yeah. 
but just a little bit. We're kind of pissed about I'm what- I'm super pissed. I'm super pissed. <laughs> Me too. I think we're all kind of mad about what's been done to us by that 1%. I think we're kind of mad of how hard it is to step up from whatever percentage it is that we're at to the next level because of student loan debt, because we can't afford insurance. We're all pissed about something. So while we can stand here and talk and share our stories, the next step is getting involved. Talk all you want. It'll help get some ideas in people's heads, but we need concrete, tangible action. So once again, we have all these signs back here for some working groups that are already forming. If you're passionate about something that you don't see back there, take initiative. Start your own working group because this is about the individual helping the whole. We are developing a community amongst ourselves to educate one another, to inform one another, and then take that and spread the word into the rest of the United States of America and the rest of the world. So, I mean, all of y'all, sit around, talk, complain all you want, but you're not doing anything until you take action. So we've got these sign-up lists up there. You'll keep being informed about what's going on. And all I can say is, let's go, let's do this thing. Our time is now. Now, if, does anybody else have anything they want to say? Anything you want to bitch about, get off your chest? Because if not, I think that what we should do now is we should just, let's get into a group and let's start talking. Let's start talking, let's break up. If people want to sign up for things, if we have ideas of what, and then we can bring our ideas to the Occupy Richmond meeting tomorrow, not saying that they're going to be set in stone or anything, but as many, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. gosh, what is sleep wrong deprivation. with me? What is girl <laughs> No, but um, not like anything's going to be set in stone, but as many ideas as we have, uh, as many ideas as possible, I mean, then we can hammer them out, tune them up, do things, but I think that it's important that we have something that we can bring to the meeting on Sunday. <laughs> At what time, y'all? Four. Four That's going to be our next uh, pseudo general assembly meeting. We'll come together, we'll discuss ideas, we'll vote through consensus, and we'll start to make some real infrastructure happen for this thing. So, break up, start talking. Okay, Monday night. Yeah, Monday night. Okay, Monday night. Okay, Monday night. Thank you.